This is a demonstration of how to do slice time and correction in SPM. First, we're going to cover how to do it through the graphical user interface. And second, we're going to talk about how you call it from the command line. So first, let's do it through the graphical user interface. We're going to open up SPM first. And right now, I'm in this directory again with all of my raw data and also with this data that's been converted and then compressed into a single nifty file. If you need to refresh around that, see the previous tutorial on DICOM importing in SPM. Alright, so through this SPM GUI, what we see here is this slice timing option. Go ahead and click on that. Okay. And also, if you click on something, this graphics window will show up with all the options at once. So first, we have this data option selected. And we're going to click on New Session to tell it that we are slice time and correcting for a single run. So I use session and run interchangeably. Uh, usually I think of runs within a session. So a session is the entire scanning session, and a run is the amount of uh, trials within a given run. Okay. All right. So session. Remember, when there's an X, it means that we need to we need to fill this in. So click over here. We can either remove it, replicate it, or specify the files we want to slice time correct. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And what you can do is, let's say, I only want to select the data set that starts with R. Okay, so this wildcard expression, this regular expression, with a caret means only select those data sets that start with R. And in this frame selector, I know that there are only 165 runs, so I'm going to select from 1 to 165. So you can see here, it expands now, and it says that there is one frame for each of these time steps within this nifty file. And I can go ahead, right-click in this pane, and click Select All. Once you're happy with that, click on Done, and all your files are selected. So next step, moving down here, is the number of slices. This is something you should have written down for your experimental protocol. Click on Select Text, and within this text box, you can type in the number of slices you have. In my case, it was 35 for this data set. So hit Enter, and now the TR, which is the repetition time. Again, this is something you should have written down. Uh, in this case, it was 2, so I just enter 2 and hit Return. TA, I don't know if, I don't know what the that stands for really, but you can see down here in the help box, it'll tell you what the TA is and how you calculate it. So it is usually calculated as TR minus TR divided by number of slices. So we have our TR, it's two, we have number of slices, which is 35. So we can enter that expression into this box up here, right? So just two and follow this equation down here, two minus two divided by 35 and hit enter and it will evaluate to whatever the answer is, 1.94 roughly. Okay, slice order is slightly more complicated. And again, you should see some help here in this text box. So in my case, I acquired slices ascending and in an interleaved order. So first we acquired, say, slices 1, 3, 5, 7, so on until 35. Then go back and select the slices 2, 4, 6, 8. So you can do this by entering a MATLAB expression. So for those of you who are familiar with the stepping commands, you can just specify this, which means 1 to 35, stepping by 2, and then concatenate that with 2 to 35, also stepping by 2. And put that in brackets. Okay, so you hit enter, and again you should see a list of interleaved numbers. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, blah, blah, blah. Once it hits 35, it goes back to 2, 4, 6, 8, and again until all those slices are, are labeled. All right, so last thing is the reference slice. And here, I'm just going to specify the very first slice as the slice we're going to slice time correct to. All right? So that's all you need, and then you can hit run, and it will process your job relatively quick. If you need to see a progress bar, you can see it in this bottom left window of SPM. So let's give it a second to get warmed up. Just like 
a lot of things in life. Okay. And here you'll see this thermometer again representing the progress bar. Okay, now once that's all done, you can go ahead, look at your output data sets, and you'll see that it now has an A appended to it. If I can find it. Yeah, this AR01 is this output data set from your slice time and correction. So that's how you do slice timing from the command line, and in the next tutorial, we'll talk about how to call it from the command line. Did I say that right? We just did it through the graphical user interface, and in the next tutorial, we'll cover it from the command line. Yeesh.